So when you come over here, it's usually dealing with the area, with the topography, and with the narrative and the stories that go around this area, and not necessarily with the specific exact stones, which were exactly for something like that. Welcome to the house of Rahav. <laughs> Somewhere over there. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. Just to go out through the wall. So we're going to see. Well, we know from the biblical narrative that her house was in the city wall. Okay, so this was the part that was excavated. So we can show some wall and some houses next to the wall. And we can say, well, this is the place. Does it mean that this is archaeologically the place? Probably not. Nevertheless, once again, we're dealing with the narrative and the biblical stories over here. So this is why we're going to use the Bible over here. So first of all, going back to the Exodus, we should remember that coming from the Sun and Peninsula, the tribes of Israel, according to the biblical narrative, they are walking northwards, and eventually their last stop is somewhere just on the other side of the Jordan. This is what is called the Arvot Yericho, area of Avot Yericho and to this place we have uh, several several things and several episodes that has to do with this uh, I'm reading and I'm quoting from the uh, book of Numbers chapter 22 um, verse 1 and they possessed land and the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on the far side of the Yarden by Yericho. Vaisud ne Israel vayachanu be'arvot Moab me'ever le'yarden Yericho. This is where they camp. And the next verse is Vayar Balak ben Tzipor et kol asher asa le'Israel. So all the story with Balak and everything happens over here. Over here at this place, this is eventually after the story of Balak. This is what is happening with Pinchas. Everything is happening over here, so you can stand over here and talk about all these stories and episodes and narratives. Vayeshev Israel Bashitim Vayachelam is not not Moab in Israel. Okay, about in Shitim, and the people began to commit a lottery with the daughters of Moab. Same story happens over here. The next, we're Mazem, still, we're still in the book of Numbers. Shittim, that's the name of the place. Why does they say I wrote Moab? They moved to another place? Like, no, 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 it's the same, it's the same place. Shittim is Avot Moab? Yeah, Shittim is an area in Avot Moab. Avot Moab is the general area. Shittim is a certain place. We see that also uh, before that already with the story of uh, uh, Balak and Bilam. He's walking to the Shittim. Um, by the way, Shittim uh, is named after the trees Three. that uh, Shita. were growing over. Shita, we know the Shita. Shita is a... Plain tree. No, no. What is a Shita? It's a, a caribou. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's uh, a Kesha. Where is the Shita? Acacia. Acacia, that's right. Shita is Acacia. It's, it's a desert. It's a desert tree, a desert plant. That we know about that. We found it in the Negev. We found it in Sinai Peninsula. We find it in Moab. Because the area just in front of us, this is the area of Moab, all the way from the Yarmouk in the north, okay, all the way to Nachal Arnon, Arnon, which separates between, okay, uh, starting from, we have Gilad and Moab, Gilad is the northern part from uh, Yarmouk all the way to the Yabok, and then Moab from the Yabok to the Arnon. Yabok or Yarmouk? Yabok, Yabok. From Yarmouk to Yabok is Gilad. Okay, from Yarmouk to Yarmouk is Gilad. And from Yabok to Arnon, that's Moab. So we have several stories that happen over here in this area before the entrance of uh, the tribes of Israel uh, to this place. Then we have the appointment of the leaders of the different tribes. Okay, we have, we have the story of the, uh, of the tribes of uh, Gad, and Reuven, and then Chatzim okay. Menashe, okay. and then we have the story with uh, uh, with appointing the leaders of the tribes in order to go to uh, the land of Israel, and then we have and then we have uh, the story with Not Slofchad. Each and every one of these episodes is something that you can deal with and talk about and discuss, and everything happened over here. So this is where these things happened. Okay, so just going through them and mentioning. Uh, uh, these uh, uh, different things, and then uh, uh, then going to uh, uh, the book of Deuteronomy. The entire book of Deuteronomy actually was said over here. This was the final speech of uh, uh, Moses, of Moshe Rabbeinu, just before entering. 
And this is why by the end of uh, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the last thing that is happening over here is uh, the following thing. מדבר השם אל משה בעצם היום הזה לאמור, עלה אל הר האברים הזה, הר נבו אשר בארץ מואב, אשר על פני ירחו, וראה את ארץ כנען אשר אני נותן לפני ישראל לאחוזה. And the Lord's Pro, okay, it's Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 48, standing over there. And the Lord spoke to Moshe that same day, saying, Go up into the Mount Avarim, to Mount Nevo, which is in the land of Moab, that is facing Yericho, and behold the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel for a possession. So over here, this is what is happening, and uh, by the end, the last chapter of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, is actually a description of what happened uh, in those days. And Moshe went up from the plains of Moab to the mountain of Nevo, to the top of the Pisgah, facing Yericho, and you see that over and over again Yericho is mentioned because this is the biggest site, this is the most uh, well known over there. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilad to Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Menashe, and all the land of Yehuda. So he's standing over there, and like a tour guide, he's making, okay, a look up. Like a look at the tribe of Dan, up there at the north, and then he's going to Naphtali, and then he's going counterclockwise. Exactly, he's going and saying this, and that, and this, and that, he's going, so that's me. Yeah, 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 that's me, that's me, yeah. But when you travel to Jordan, you'll be able to see it over there because... My people will see us tomorrow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, and this is. And, uh, okay. And all the land of Yehuda, as far as the outmost sea, and the Negev, and the plain, uh, the valley of Yericho. The last thing that he shows... Okay, in this uh, lookout, in this Tatsvit, is the whole city of the palm trees. And the Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and Yaakov, saying, I will give it to you. Uh, you hope. And, uh, and we can see that, okay, this is just the last thing that was done, and this is uh, somewhere on the other side of the Jordan. Okay, the other side of the Jordan, and this happens over here. So we are standing here, okay, on the top of the tail, and we are able to look. At the topography of the entire environment, the entire surrounding, we can see all these uh, uh, biblical stories, episodes, according to the, uh, to the biblical narrative. Um, the most famous one, obviously, is the story with Rahab and uh, the conquest of Yericho. So uh, I will not go through that. Okay, I will not go through that. But, uh, but uh, uh, the story tells that uh, uh, two spies came over here. Okay. They were coming over here, they were spending the night uh, with Rahab, and uh, they promised to spare her, her life if she will put, uh, you know, the red thread just outside the wall. And uh, she tells them, uh, don't run, don't go to the Jordan, but rather go to the mountains, because people will, they will send scouts after you to chase you, and if you will go to the Jordan River, they will definitely get you before you will cross the river, and get to the so they run to the mountains. Take a look over there. How many Sorry. caves are there? And once again, we can talk about the ideal espionage. They can sit up there, and from there, three days they're sitting over there, and they just need to write down and record all the movements of the Canaanite army over here. Now they're moving their chariots, now they're moving these, now they're, and when they return to the camp, they can give an exact description of what are all the preparation of uh, this king of Yericho, what he's attempting to do, what, and when they come in, they know exactly the size of the city, where the walls are, where the gate is, where everything is, and they can manage do all these things. So it's a combination of the words of the Lord, and everything that was done over here, and uh, things that are being done by Kuzboko helps to those who help themselves. Those who do it from downstairs, he is doing from upstairs, he's bringing the things from, from up. And uh, it's interesting to see these caves over there. You can see now the Karantal and the Mount of the Christian. Just left to the Karantal, to the monastery, you can see over there, there is a cliff with some holes inside. These are caves. Some of these caves were excavated and were dug, and they were used as shelters.
to people that escaped from Jericho. One of these caves, for example, is called Me'arat Avior. Me'arat Avior was one of the remains over there. It was a very interesting thing. From the time of Alexander the Great, with the battles between the Persians and the Greeks, some of the people that were living over here, Jews at the time, fled to these caves. And one of them was probably a very wealthy person. And there were some people that owned him money. Israelites are coming over here and they are surrounding the walls. How many times, by the way, did they surround the walls? Seven. Seven. How many times did they surround the walls? Seven days. How many Seven times days. surround the walls? One in, one, one in six days. Thirteen, one, thirteen, thirteen times. times. Thirteen times. Thirteen. In the first six days, they surrounded wow. once. Okay, in the seven, on the seventh day, in the last day, they surrounded, they circled seven times. Okay, altogether, 13 times, they circled and surrounded the uh, Jericho, and eventually the walls fell down. And uh, what happens over there is the fact that uh, Joshua is burning down the city, leaving no one here in this place. And going back to the explanation of Tvir earlier, we can start and imagine and understand why. Because when you bring your monotheistic God, the one and only God, into this place, and this serves as the center of the non-monotheistic pagans that are worshipping here in this area, this is going to be a symbol. And this is why it's going to be wiped out of the earth. And this is why Joshua will curse everyone that will try to rebuild the city. Because if it is a simple, then it, is, it should remain destroyed. And what will happen later will be the fact that at the time of Achav, a guy called Chiel from Beit El, Chiel Beit HaEli, he will, he will rebuild Jericho, according to the biblical narrative. And according to the curse of Joshua, he will start to build the city. And when he started, he is the firstborn son, his oldest son died. And when he finished building the city, his last son died. He lost all his children through the process of rebuilding the city. The interesting thing is that the Medrash and Chazal add few things to that, but that we'll do later on. We'll see down over there, see the green spot over here. This is the water spring of Elijah. Elijah. This Elijah. is the big water spring of this area. And we're going to finish the story over there. But one more thing I would like to deal here with the biblical narrative yet, and just to open another side because we can stand here and talk for hours. But the. Uh, uh, Something that we don't notice so, so much, but uh, once again we can deal with that over here. Let's open the book of Judges. Okay, the book of Judges, chapter 3. At the beginning of the chapter in verse 7, ויעשו בני ישראל את הרע בעיני השם, וישכחו את השם אלוהיהם, ויעבדו את הבעלים ואת האשרות. Once again, you, they worship the Baal and the Asherah, and uh, we spoke about that earlier. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going, to, I'm going to verse 12, and I'll read it in English. And the children of Israel did evil again in sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon the king of Moab against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered to him the children of Ammon and Amalek, Eglon the king of Moab, he gathering, he's gathering the other nations from the surrounding, and went and smote Israel, and they seized the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon the king of Moab for 18 years. The story starts with the fact that Eglon, king of Moab, is conquering Jericho. Now we all know the story with Ehud, son of Gerah, who came and eventually slaughtered Eglon. Where did it happen? Ever thought about that? If the episode starts with the taking over Jericho, we may assume that at least uh, it has to do with the continuation of the story. 
Meaning that later on, okay, but when the children of Israel cried to the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, a the son of Gera, a Binyamini, a left-handed man, and by him the children of Israel sent a, okay, a present to Eglon, the king of Moab, and he's going over there, and he's asking, he's going to the Eglon's palace, and uh, asked him to, uh, he said, I brought you present from, from the Lord, so he's raising up, he's, raising, uh, he's getting up, and then uh, Ehud is uh, stabbing him with the knife. And the end of the story, and the end of the story is, and it came to pass when he arrived that he blew a shofar in the mountain of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them, and he said to them, Follow after me, for the Lord has delivered your enemies, namely Moab, into your hand. And they went down after him, and seized the fords of the Yarden towards Moab, and allowed no man to pass over. Oops. They're taking over the bridges and the passes of the Jordan River, and they're not allowing any Moabite to pass on. From where to where? The Moabites are on the other side of the Jordan. He is coming from the Mount of Ephraim, coming down and capturing the bridges over, not allowing anyone to cross. From where to where? From Jericho to Moab. From Jericho to Moab. Because over here, this is what they will they will do. And they went down after him. Um, follow after me. For the Lord delivered your enemies, namely Moab, into your hand. And they went down after him and seized the force of Yarden towards Moab and allowed no man to pass over. And they slew of Moab at the time about 10,000 men, all lusty and all men of valor, and no man escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land was quiet for 80 years. So once again we can see that at least one of the interpretations that is possible, it's not necessarily the only one, but at least understanding the area over here can give us the insight that maybe this story also happened over here. Because this is how we start. What was the reference again? Chapter 3. Judges, chapter 3. Okay, it's going through the entire chapter, starting from the beginning to the end. So this is so this is a story from the Bible. And we can go on and on and on and on and on. And I will stop over here because many of the references are in the booklet that uh, we gave you. And uh, you can go over there. But one thing that I would like to mention over here. One of the stories, one of the episodes that has to do with uh, uh, the Israelites crossing the Jordan River is that immediately after crossing the Jordan River, they had to go to Mount Gizim and Mount Eval mm -hmm. and have the ceremony of the blessing and the curse and uh, all the entire like, uh, ceremony over there. But just imagine to yourself what does it mean to take two million people across the Jordan run to Nablus, to Shechem, the same day. Going all the way over there, making the ceremony, and then returning back in order to fight against Jericho. This is why the Midrashim and everything that has to do with that, count that as something that has to do with miracle. In a miraculous way, they could go all the way up there elevator, and return. Miraculous elevator took them there. Yeah, yeah. Went over up. there and returned over mm -hmm. here. Some of the people, especially the Samaritans, who were not very fond with the Israelites and the Jews during Second Temple period, they say, "Come on, this is impossible. This is impossible. You can't take so many people, okay, and shift them one day to Nablus and then bring them back and then this and that. No, no, no way." So we have a very interesting documentation saying that the Samaritans identified two hills just next to Jericho as Mount Grizim and Mount Eval in order to save them the interpretation that they were shifted and moved over there, over and back in one day in order to capture Jericho. So by the end of Second Temple period, we have documentation of two different traditions. One saying that Mount Grizim and Mount Eval are next to Nablus, where we know they are, and another tradition saying and specifying that Mount Grizim and Mount Eval are 
just at the shore of the Jordan, next to Jericho. We don't know exactly, but maybe two of these mountains over here were identified as Mount Kizimim in the valley. Now the interesting thing is what? The Samaritans changed their tune. <laughs> And that brought to a very interesting uh, uh, debate okay, between the rabbis themselves. Because we have it, okay, according to the rabbis themselves, it has to do with that. It's a uh, reference 58 to those who הלוהמה בעבר הירדן, מן הירדן ולהלן אחרי דרך מבוא השמש מקום שהחמאס אורחת בארץ הכנעני היושב בערבה מולה גלגל אצל אלוני מורה זה הר גריזים והר אבן שבין הכותים This is Mount Gryzim, Mount Eval Among the Samaritans, דברי רבי יהודה רבי אליעזר אומר, אין זה הר גריזים והר אבן של כותים It's not the Mount Gryzim and Eval of the Samaritans שנאמר הלוהמה בעבר הירדן and he's going over there מה מקיים רב אליעזר הר גריזים והר אבל? So how does he identify הר גריזים והר אבל? שתי גבשושיות עשו וקראום זה הר גריזים וזה הר אבל. He took two heels and said well this is Mount Gryzim and this is Mount Eval. Now why am I mentioning that? Because these two guys you probably are very familiar with the mosaic floor of the church that was found in Madaba, what we call the Madaba Map. The Madama map is a map of the land of Israel. If you go over there, you see two references to Mount Gruzim and Mount Eval in the map. One next to Nablus, the other one on the shore of the Jordan River, just next to Jericho. So in the 7th, 8th century, when they depicted the mosaic floor, they put over there the different size and different references to the places they knew about they put in the map itself two references, two traditions. Everything is happening over here, and it's starting over here. So we can go through lots of different episodes that uh, happen over here. Just to mention some of them. One, for example, the appointment of Hillel Hazaken. We spoke about Hillel. Okay, he was appointed here in Jericho. Reference 54. Okay, to those who have the booklet. משמתו חגי זכריה ומלאכי נסתלקה רוח הקודש מישראל. Once חגי זכריה ומלאכי, the last prophets died, okay, they don't have any more רוח הקודש, ואף על פי כן היו משתמשים בבת קול. שפעם אחת, once, היו מסובים בעליית בית גוריה ביריחו. They were sitting together in a place called בית גוריה in Jericho. ניתנה עליהם בת קול מן השמיים ואמרה, voice came out of heaven and said, יש בכם אדם אחד שראוי שתשרה שכינה עליו. There's one person among you over here that worth to be, okay, שכינת be on him, אלא שאין דורו ראוי לכך. נתנו עיניהם בהלל הזקן, וכשמת הספידו אי חסיד אי עניו תלמידו של עזרא. So this is where they appointed הלל הזקן with a voice that came from heaven, and we can understand and see that. And it is interesting to see that Hillel was here in Yehichu, in Jericho. He was dealing with certain things that has to do with agriculture of the area. We're going to speak about that later on next, next spring. Uh, with the palm trees and things that were allowed and they could do. And other places not. And uh, this is the situation over here in Jericho. So once again we can see how Jericho, as far as archaeology, biblical narrative, history and different things, has a lot to do with people to come here and listen to all these stories and all this information. Okay. Whoa.